Now, for the second time this week, U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has urged North Korea to enter into negotiations and give up its nuclear weapons program. He said that a sustained cessation of North Korea's threatening behavior was needed before the United States could in fact talk with Pyongyang about its development of nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles. Now, Rex Tillerson had also raised the hopes this week that United States and North Korea could actually negotiate to resolve their standoff and he said that the U.S. was quote-unquote ready to talk anytime Pyongyang would like to speak. Now he's also reiterated that the United States would not accept any preconditions for diplomatic talks with North Korea saying that the Trump administration and the international community will continue to pressurize Pyongyang to give up its nuclear and missile program. This pressure campaign will cause North Korea to alter its course, re-examine whether this truly is going to lead to a more secure, uh, more security for the regime, uh, and whether it is, is possible for them to even sustain an economy if they continue the path they're on. We're going to continue our diplomatic efforts. Those options remain open until other things may foreclose the diplomatic option. However, North Korea's ambassador to the United Nations has ignored a U.S. call for a cessation of weapons testing to allow for talks with Pyongyang on its nuclear program and has said that his country will not pose a threat to any state as long as its interests were not infringed upon. It is already well known to the outside that the U.S. has now stockpiled more than 4,000 nuclear warheads in its nuclear arsenals deploying over 115 technical nuclear bombs over the territory of each NATO allies and is now planning to consume up around 1 trillion US dollars for its nuclear weapons, uh, maintenance and modernization during 30 years in future. All of the figures of clearly of prove that the, that the US is only the ring leader in nuclear proliferation. Meanwhile, Tillerson has also criticized China and Russia for their support to North Korea. He's hit out to China for its oil supply to Pyongyang and has slammed Russia for using North Korean laborers. We particularly call on Russia and China to increase pressure, including going beyond full implementation of the UN Security Council resolutions. Continuing to allow North Korean laborers to toil in slave-like conditions inside Russia in exchange for wages used to fund nuclear weapons programs calls into question Russia's dedication as a partner for peace. Similarly, as Chinese crude oil flows to North Korean refineries, the United States questions China's commitment to solving an issue that has serious implications for the security of its own citizens.